right there. He take, took a blink, flipped his shoulders, and ran with the receiver, and fortunately the quarterback threw it to him. I think we saw this clip earlier, but it, it applied to both situations. There is a lot of carryover in, in the drills and the types of routes and the techniques you used, whether it's just a drop back, get your head back, read the quarterback's shoulders, or blink the receiver, see the intent, ease back, break on the ball. Crossing routes. Uh, usually uh, uh, you're getting, well, there's, there's a couple different scenarios here. Uh, here we're working a high-low combination uh, that we see quite a bit of in today's football um, where the number two receiver uh, runs a dig and the number one receiver runs a shallow crossing route. I want to stay high with the initial uh, linebacker and, and play the dig. I'm going to run that one back um and and stay with that dig route and then the backside linebacker we should get great communication under 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 and the backside linebacker is going to come up and play the crossing route if i try to do it the opposite way oftentimes that crossing route will go right on by that first linebacker you're going to see game illustrations of both the next drill i'm going to do is you're going to see where uh, if it's a two by two set the two crossing routes are crossing and then you're going to see that there's a um, um, a player in a white jersey right behind the linebacker uh, looking at it from the offense on the right. And then there's a, a manager or a coach standing on the hash to the left where the linebackers want to ease back. They want to defend the dig routes. Again, three to four yards inside, three to four yards underneath. And, and yet they want to read the quarterback there. He's defending the dig and be ready to break up on the crossing route. So I defend the dig. I don't jump the crossing route because then that dig gets thrown in behind me. But if it is thrown shallow, I've got to um, explode and break on it and hold it to a minimum gain. Easing back, easing back, breaking on it, fitting. 42 fits outside in, 43 inside out. Defense is knowing where your help is. Easing back, defend the dig, break up on the shallow route. Hold it to a very minimal gain. Then I add in the check down. Number 34 is the running back who leaks out of the backfield, and I've got to see that as well. So I'm defending the dig. I'm getting ready to break on a crossing route, and then I also have to be aware of the quarterback uh, dropping the ball off to the running back in a check down. I find that when our offense, even in zone coverage, starts throwing crossing routes, my guys have a tendency to jump it, and then they give up the dig route in behind them. So this is a drill that I do early and I do frequently um, just to reinforce the concept, defend the deepest part of my zone first, break up on either the crossing or the check down. Now here's uh, some more of the high-low. You can see the first linebacker, 42, staying under the initial dig and the backside linebacker breaking up on the crossing route. Here you're going to see some great illustrations, and I want you to uh, run these back and, and look at where the ball snapped and how little a real estate is gained. That's a three-yard gain. Then watch the depth. 31 gets to eight, nine, ten yards depth as he's showing um, blitz because he's seeing the ball thrown and breaking up on it, holding that to a very minimum gain. You're going to watch uh, 40 into the boundary, easing back, staying underneath that deeper route and breaking up on the shallow route, forcing the quarterback to throw underneath. And then if we've got our, our feet settled and we're breaking on the ball, we're going to hold that to a very minimum gain and discourage that receiver from wanting that pass again. Easing back, a one-yard gain, and I think if you run it back, you'll see 45 got himself. Let's see here. He's at nine yards. Sees the ball thrown. 40 took away that deeper crosser, and we're breaking up and holding it to a very minimum gain. The essence of zone coverage, breaking on the football.
Here, both linebackers, you see the boundary backer did a great job of easing underneath that vertical route by 89, the tight end, feeling that the quarterback um, was running out of time, seeing the check down release and, and breaking up on it. Now, we're a three-deep team. Um, we, we play a lot of two-deep, but we play a lot of three-deep, and so we def we get quite a bit of four-vertical out of a two-by-two two and a three-by-one uh, formation sets. And the way we defend that, you can see the boundary defender still takes away the three-step, but then the inside backer is going to run with the vertical. And the first thing the, the free safety says in a two-by-two two set is verti alert because we have to be very conscious, and that allows that middle third safety to midpoint the number two receiver to the boundary into the field and break on the football. So we're going to carry him uh, both with the boundary backer and then our strong safety to the field. Now, when I read that as a linebacker, I'm going to ease out. I don't have to run out of there. I'm easing out to defend the hook. When I see the intent of that receiver, you can see 48's doing it here. Uh, right now I got a verti alert, verti alert. I'm going to ease out. I'm going to uh, play the hook. And then as soon as I see his intent, I want to flip my hips and man turn. If I zone turn, uh, I get separation uh, by that tight end. I man turn, I flip my hips, get my head back as quickly as possible so I can see the ball thrown and make a play on the football. Good illustration uh, by that linebacker right there, number 40, I believe. As you can see, our offense uh, challenges us with the four vertical routes quite often. Get your head back as soon as you can, 40, so you can make a play in the football. If you don't get your head back, that ball will be thrown right over your shoulder for a completion. Now the criticism I have there is the linebacker got on top of the route where you really want to be on the back hip shoulder and then the linebacker didn't get his head turned um, and I think you got to get your head turned as quickly as possible so you can see the ball thrown and make a play on it. Great job by the free safety reading the quarterback. Versus trips, I'm still going to have the same boundary inside linebacker carry the vertical, as you can see right there. Uh, because it's the same guy doing it, whether it's 2x2 two two or 3x1, and so there's continuity in teaching and in assignments. Where that backer in the same thing versus a two deep, uh, if we get trips and we get number three running a vertical, it's that backer, that middle backer or boundary backer that's going to carry the vertical. Nice job by 43. Okay, nice job. Now that linebacker, I believe, zone turned. And uh, you can see that there's a little bit of separation, and yet he was close enough to the tight end that he forced the quarterback to put air underneath the ball and float it to the receiver and allowing the uh, corner to break inside and steal it. We do play our corner in what we refer to as a stress position 
versus a two by two set where he's playing inside of the corner where he can break on the deep ball to the corner and help break on a deep ball to the tight end, squeezing that. Now this is a different concept. This is a wheel route. We ask our boundary defender who's 45 here to run with the wheel route. Now this is a wheel stop where the, or the uh, number two receiver, I believe, ran a wheel and then stopped and, and 45 would be all over that and just thought it'd be a good illustration uh, to show. Now we're getting back to trips for vertical and you can see the boundary backer is sinking underneath it. Uh, I think he should continue to sink with the number three receiver. We're running a zone stunt here. Where we're losing our other inside backer, so that, that but it's still the boundary backer, and he did force enough air under the ball to allow the safety to break on it. Anytime I get a motion, as you can see in several of these, to two by two, I'm expecting good chance that there's going to be a vertical alert, or they're they're uh, widening the flat defender to throw an option route on the boundary linebacker. Big split right there would lead the linebacker to believe that there's something happening vertical. Great job by the boundary backer. And a good illustration that he doesn't need to really um, uh, hustle out of there too quickly and, and open it up a seam underneath him. He can ease out and and still maintain that good underneath presence underneath that vertical route. And and at some point he does need to accelerate, but uh, not for a while. Now I'd like to see the front side linebacker collision that receiver and slow his butt down, which would certainly make the boundary backer's job easier. Here he's caught up in play action. Nice job uh, easing back, and then he did have to turn and hustle to get out of there. And then in our coverage scheme, the front side linebacker's got to hustle back as soon as he reads verticals by one and two and play the check down, which would be in this um, frame here, number 45, uh, playing the check down. Now he got caught up in the play action fake. Good illustration of the check down. Great illustration by the boundary backer, number 40, easing out of there and getting all the depth he needs and yet staying underneath the vertical of the number two receiver into the boundary who happens to be a wide receiver here. Ease, ease, ease. Now he's zone turned uh, but, but did it very well. And the ball ran away from the um, field linebacker, but the boundary backer, who in that case was a nickel back, uh, was in great shape in order to make the play. Now rushing the passer. I want to take my inside arm and I want to break the outside arm of the blocker trying to block me. Then take my outside arm and club it off, dip and rip, turn my inside hip into the quarterback, which will turn my body to the quarterback. So my inside step should dip and turn into the quarterback. I want to pick a point four yards upfield and a yard to two yards outside of that offensive lineman. And I want to go for that point and that is my decision point whether I dip and rip and beat him with speed to the outside which I want him to do most of the time or if he overplays to the outside then I could club dip and rip and counter inside but get back to a contained position if I'm the contained person. I think it's very important as you teach finish in every drill that the contained rusher should always fit with his helmet on the upfield shoulder of the quarterback. Now, to take it a step further, uh, I think you should always go to that quarterback and, and uh, knock the football out of the quarterback's hand with your outside arm as you club and secure the tackle with your inside arm. 
working on here, exploding to the line of scrimmage at the last moment, and then executing my technique. I'm going to discontinue the narration here. You're going to see a lot of different pass rush technique. Uh, hopefully it'll be helpful to you, and then you'll see some great pass rush techniques utilized in game footage.